Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog FarmhouseOnBoon.com and today I want to show you how to make a buttonhole. So if you are brand new to my blog and YouTube channel and this sewing series, we have gone over everything that a beginner needs to get started. I mean, from the very basics, how to thread a machine, how to create a hem, a seam, now this is a little bit more of an advanced technique, still super simple, you can totally do it, but it's one of those things that you can make tons of projects for your home, pillow covers, aprons, curtains, without ever learning it. But there are just a few things that I really enjoy sewing for my home and my kids that I need a buttonhole for. Super simple process, and so I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now here I have two different machines. I talked about this in my basic sewing essentials video, but I have one that was less than $100 and I have one that was $400. Now the difference is that this one is computerized and this one is a more basic kind of knob machine that isn't electronic. Now honestly, for everything that I do in my home and sewing, everything I make, either one works just fine. So I actually recommended getting the cheaper version so I'm going to show you how to make a buttonhole on that and then explain how you would do it if you have a computerized machine. Now the process is very similar once you understand how to make a buttonhole, it's such a similar process, but there are just a few differences that you should note. All right, first up, you're going to need the button that you plan or several buttons. You're likely going to have several because you're going to need to be able to determine the size of your buttonhole. Now you're also going to need a buttonhole foot. It'll look something like this. It may look a little bit different for the more basic machine. Either way, you can use a foot just like this to make a buttonhole on either machine. Now for the more computerized machine, you'll need this in the back. For this more basic machine that just has a knob to change the stitch lengths, you will not. So as you'll see on this machine, it's more computerized. This one just has a knob that represents the stitches over here. All right, so to get started, I'm going to make markings on how large I want the buttonhole to be. Now, it's good to use something that you can remove. This is a sewing marker, and so it'll wash out later. Now, if you only have a pencil or something like that, that'll totally work too. Now, keep in mind, you do not want the buttonhole to just go from here to here. You want it to expand a little bit beyond so that it's easy to get the button in and out. If it's just the exact same size, you're gonna have a really hard time forcing it through. Notice I put the markings kind of beyond the size of the button. Now keep in mind that if you're doing a whole row of buttons, so you're doing down the front of a shirt, something like that, you're going to want to mark them all up front so that you have the right spacing. So this would be a good time on the garment you're making to go ahead and mark them all. On your machine, on my basic brother, which I will link a very, very similar model to this in the description below. It has a slightly different flower pattern, but it's the same basic machine. They make this one in many different colors, but it's the same concept. Number one here is the buttonhole. So you'll notice that when we turn to one, there's an A, B, C, and D. So the first step is going to be to add the buttonhole foot. To do that, you can either press a release in the back or just kind of pull it down. Then you're gonna to wanna to put your buttonhole foot in, line this piece up with the little kind of rod piece on there. Use this little lever in the back to put it down and it'll catch right there on the buttonhole foot and they should be attached. Okay, one thing to keep in mind is that when you're sewing buttonholes, the machine goes backwards. So you're gonna start at the bottom of the buttonhole and go back. So keep that in mind whenever you're marking and measuring for the garment you're making. I'm gonna put my little test sample piece of fabric right in here. And I'm gonna make that bottom blue marking show up here in the little window down my foot. Now you might wanna test and make sure your needle 
actually hits that blue spot and it's not too far forward or too far back, we're good in this instance. Now, we're going to start with step A and that's gonna make the bottom of the buttonhole. So slowly press down your pedal and give it about, oh, five-ish stitches back and forth. And then when the needle stops on this side, you're gonna switch to B. Now, as you can see here in this little guide, B is going to make the left side of the buttonhole. And you just want to carry it up all the way until you get to your other blue marking. Okay, we're there. My blue marking's in the window. And now we're going to shift to C, which is just like A, only now you're doing the top part. It's because A and C do the bottom and the top. Again, go back and forth about five times. Maybe a little bit more. <laughs> All right, now that it's over here, this down with my little wheel here on the side. And we're gonna go for D. Now, as you can see, D is going to go down this side of the buttonhole. And just go all the way down until it meets your bottom line. At this point, if you want to reinforce it, you could go around again. Usually the bottom and top are good. Sometimes you don't get a good enough stitch on the sides, so you might just want to move your needle over there, like maybe do one stitch for A and then go back up B, one stitch for C and then back down D. But I'm going to show you what it looks like now at this point in the next step. All right, we're just going to pull this out of here. And there is your buttonhole. Now to open this up, you're going to use a seam ripper like this. So you basically just want to put your seam ripper in and then pull it all the way up. When you get to the other side, don't be too overzealous or you'll go through. And there is your nice finished buttonhole. All right, now the difference on the more computerized machine, if you happen to have one, I know a lot of you bought machines like this for the sewing series, but if you have a computerized machine, the first step is to find your buttonhole. Now on mine, I see how there are several options. Like I said, this machine just has way too many features for me. I don't even need them. But what you want for this is just this 41. That's a good buttonhole right there. And the difference is, is that a machine like this actually will make the size of the button automatically for you. So what you do is you load the button here in the back part of the foot, press it down shut, tight. You load it into the machine, just like in the other machine here, by pressing it down. Then the next step, is there's a little lever over here. You pull that down. So now, whenever you go to do the buttonhole, you'll put your machine on the setting. So for mine, it was 41. Turn it to 41, press go, and that little lever will control the size of the button. So it'll just make it automatically. You won't be flipping back and forth. You just press the button and it'll go backwards, like just like in the other machine, but it'll make it automatically for you. So same concept, only in this one, you kind of set it and you can basically walk away. It'll make the buttonhole for you. So one advantage to the more computerized machine is that it will automatically make all of your buttons the exact same size as long as you leave that one button there in the back. They'll all be the exact same size, whereas on your more mechanical machine, you're going to have to mark all your buttons and make sure that they are the exact same size in order to get the buttonholes to be the same size. Either way, making a buttonhole is super simple. Now, one thing I always recommend is before doing the buttonhole on your garment, get out a little scrap piece of fabric and make sure everything is working right. Do one quick run through, whether you're doing it on either machine and just check because I know that I've had it to where I just did it wrong the first time and it was right on my garment. Now you can rip it out 
and on this more mechanical machine, you can kind of see that something's going wrong and stop, whereas on this one, it's just going for it. But it's a little bit tricky to rip out because it's pretty tight and you're gonna need your little seam ripper to get in there and do it. And so obviously, don't cut it until you know you have it right, but you can rip the seams out with your seam ripper. I personally just like to do one run through, make sure everything's gonna look good, and then carry on. Now, either way, whether you're using this machine or this machine, mark the start of the buttonholes on this so that you're sure that they are the right distance apart. On this one, you're gonna wanna mark the bottom and the top since you're not gonna have that automatic feature that makes it the exact same size. Some projects that I've done on here that have used a buttonhole, one would be my daughter's knot dress. So in that, I didn't actually use buttons at all, but I pulled through a little strap and made a knot to make a cute little kind of whimsical feature on a little boutique style dress for my daughter. I've also enjoyed, I haven't done a tutorial in here, but making pillow covers that button down the front. It's kind of a fun way you can add a different color or size or maybe a decorative button of some kind. That's a fun way to use buttons. Obviously, if you wanna make like a button down shirt or something like that, another reason why you might use a button. All right, well, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and you could see how simple it is to make buttons, even with a very basic machine. If you're brand new to this series, go ahead and check out all of the videos. I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description below so that you can start at the very beginning. The whole goal is to get someone who has wanted to sew but always felt like it was super complicated, way beyond their skill level to start. We start at the very beginning, walk you through everything so that you can start from nothing to being able to sew some items for your home. All right, well, if you're brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.